do do? This is Mr. Daryl. I would like my trophy, please. It is the silver one that looks just like a football. The one in the gym? Yes, it's in the gym. I would need your permission to access the trophy case. My permission? You got it. All right, thanks, Daryl. Hey, Kayla. Hey, where are you going? Oh, I'm going to go get a trophy for Daryl. Oh, have hey, fun. Kayla. Excuse me, what are you doing? I can help you find what you're looking for. Fingerprints, tire impressions, shoe marks. They can even take photographs of the crime scene. Yep, they do. <laughs> How do you become a crime scene investigator? Well, you need four years of college coursework. That's a bachelor's degree. It can be in a related field such as criminology or a science. You also need to be certified in collecting the evidence. You can easily obtain that with a local law enforcement agency. Now remember, the word evidence is a sign or a clue that shows something exists or that if something is true. Like this paper could be evidence or fingerprints can be evidence. So I'm gonna show you how crime scene investigators collect fingerprints today. Come on, let's go. So I'm gonna show you two ways on how you can look at your own fingerprints right at home. Come on, come closer, you're gonna need to see this. Okay, so for this first method, you are going to need index cards. I am using an index card that's six inches by four inches. If you don't have an index card, you can use a regular sheet of paper and use your ruler, your scissors, and a pencil to cut it out. You're gonna need some clear tape. Make sure it's clear, the clear kind. You're gonna need a magnifying glass. Or if you don't have a magnifying glass, you can use your camera on a phone 
and zoom in to see your fingerprints. And of course, your fingers. So let's get started. So on your index card, what you're gonna do is you're going to use your ruler to draw a line right in the middle. What we're doing is making a card here so we can place our fingerprints on just like real crime scene investigators do. So if my index card is about four and a half inches, so I'm gonna mark it right in the middle, make a dot, make a dot, place my ruler on top, and draw a line right in the middle. And then I'm going to make five sections on the top and five sections on the bottom, one for each finger, because we have 10 fingers. So you can do that by measuring about an inch and a half, place a dot, and draw the line. So every inch and a half, you're gonna draw a line, another line, another line, until you have five on top, five on the bottom. Now, I went ahead and put an extra line on the bottom, in the right in the middle of the paper, just so we can label the fingerprints, but you don't have to. Okay? Um, and then after we have our paper, or chart done, let me show you how to actually get your fingerprint. So I'm gonna use another index card, or you can use a white sheet of paper. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a circle or an oval big enough to fit your finger in, whichever finger you use. I'm gonna use my index finger. So I'm gonna draw a big enough circle with my pencil. We have to be a pencil because we need the graphite, which is the part you use to draw. So it has to be a pencil. And we're just gonna color this in. Color, color, color. You might need to go a little darker and just fill that circle in. Okay, that looks good enough. Okay, now what you're gonna do is you're gonna get your finger and you're gonna press right in that circle to get the graphite right on your finger. So you might have to do it again. You can rub on the paper on the circle so you can get some of that graphite on your finger. I think that looks good. If it's too light, you can even add more by coloring it in again and rubbing it again. Okay, once we're done, we're gonna go ahead and grab a piece of tape. Now I went ahead and cut out my tape beforehand. So we wanna grab a piece of tape. Make sure you only touch it at the end. You don't wanna touch right in the middle of the center of the tape because then it'll grit your own fingerprints and you won't be able to use it. So we gotta make sure we get the paper right at the corner and place it right on your finger just like a bandage. Give it a quick little tap. Peel it off very slowly and very carefully. And you can kind of see my fingerprint on there already. Now we're gonna get the index card that we did earlier. And we're gonna place, I'm gonna turn it around right here. We're gonna place it on there. Give it a quick tap, little rub. And you can really see the fingerprint. Now you can use a magnifying glass to take a closer look. All right, so that's one way. Go ahead and do the rest of your fingers. And I'll show you one more way. First, start by labeling at the top of your card right for your right hand and at the bottom left for your left hand. Next, label in the middle of your card the name of each finger. First, start with your thumb, then your index finger, middle finger, ring finger, and pinky. Remember to take your time and make sure each of your fingerprints come out clearly. Okay, for the second way to look at your fingerprints, we are going to use black construction paper. It doesn't have to be black, but it does have to be a darker shade. We don't want white. So it has to be a dark shade of uh, construction paper. We need a little bit of corn starch, just a tiny bit, a glass, glass jar, now be very careful and use parent supervision when handling glass jars. We need some fluffy paint brushes. Make sure they're the fluffy kind. They're not too stiff, they're nice and fluffy. We need a white color pencil, a ruler, scissors, 
some clear tape. It also has to ha be clear, clear tape. I went ahead and cut some pieces out already so I can have them ready for you. And we need some magnifying glasses. And like I said before, if you don't have a magnifying glass, you can always take a picture of it with a phone and you can zoom in to see your fingerprint. Okay, so let's get started. The first step is you're gonna grab your sheet of paper and fold it in half. Then you're going to fold it in half once more. It doesn't have to be too perfect. And what we're doing is we're creating a card finger so we can put our fingerprints on just like real crime scene investigators do. Okay? We're going to get our scissors. Cut that up. Be careful when you're using scissors. Okay, so now we have four pieces. You don't need all four, but this is a good size for your fingerprints to go on. Let me set that aside. I cut some out earlier. And we're going to make our fingerprint chart like this one. I'm going to grab your white color pencil, find the center of it, which happens to be a, like four inches and a half. You can Find the center of that, draw a white line, or if you prefer, you can even fold it in half to get the center of the paper. And now we're gonna create a total of 10 squares, one for each fingerprint, one for each of your fingers. You can do this by measuring, it's a little bit about an inch or an inch and a half, just to make sure it fits your finger. So we're gonna do that, you draw one, two, three, four, and you, then you have five spaces. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to lift your fingerprint. Once we put our chart to the side. I have one that I was working on earlier, so we're gonna fill in our fingerprints. We're gonna continue working on this one. Okay, so to lift your fingerprint, you're gonna grab your glass jar. Now, be very careful with the glass jar. It has to be clean. So if you can get a parent to wash it for you, that would be even better. So make sure it needs to be clean and dry. Now what you do is you grab a little bit of your corn starch and pour it in a little bowl, just very little. And we are not using real fingerprint powder. Uh, real fingerprint powder is actually black and it picks up oils on the slightest of things. Um, and that's how fingerprint powder works. It picks up the oils on your hands that you leave behind. So even if you have clean hands and you washed your hands, you're still gonna have oils on your finger. So the powder sticks to the oils on the objects that you touch, and that's how we can get your fingerprints. But because we're not using real fingerprint powder, um, we're gonna have to make sure our hands are a little more oil than usually, than more, than, yeah, than usually. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick a finger. I'm gonna pick, let's see, let me pick my thumb this time. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna touch it on your forehead. And the reason, or your nose, uh, make sure your fingers are clean. And you're gonna do this because naturally we have more oils on our forehead. Interesting, right? Okay, so now my finger's ready to go. This is a clean jar and we're gonna touch the jar with our finger. Lightly tap it, not too hard, not too soft. Tap it. And I can see my fingerprint. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I can kind of see the outline of my fingerprint on there already. So we're gonna collect it and put it on paper so we can examine it. So after that, make sure, now you don't touch that area of the jar. Real crime scene investigators use gloves, but we are going to pick this fingerprint up. You're going to get your fluffy brush. You're going to lightly dab it in the cornstarch. Now, if you have extra, tap it to get the excess off. And you're going to tap it. Just tap it. Don't swipe it. Just tap it. Real crime scene investigators, or the way we usually collect our fingerprints is we do a swirl. But for our case, since we have using a paintbrush, we're going to tap. So let's tap, tap. And if you see that there's a lot of powder on there, 
cornstarch on there, we'll just tap it again and just tap, 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 tap. Okay, and then if you wish, you can kind of like remove that or use your brush to kind of remove the excess around it. Okay, that looks good. Okay, now we're gonna use our tape. Make sure you're only grabbing it by the corner because we don't want to touch it in the middle. And you're gonna very carefully place it on top of that fingerprint and kind of rub it in. Okay, then we're gonna peel it off slowly. There we go. Oop. Make sure it doesn't curl on you. Okay, let's go put this on the paper. So we're gonna put our on our chart right here. Put it down right there. Kind of give it a nice swirl. And now you can do the rest of your fingers. Grab a magnifying glass or take a picture with your phone and you can examine these fingerprints. Hmm. I think I have a whirl type fingerprint. And there you go. Okay, so there are three different kinds of fingerprints. Now remember, we are looking at the ridges of your finger. The ridges are the tiny bumps and grooves on your fingertips. Now when we examine a fingerprint, we're looking from this section of your finger, from not the, just the tip, but from the top to kind of like right here. So let's look at the three kinds of fingerprints. First we have arches. Arches are fingerprints that start on one side, go up in a little hill, and come back down again. These are arches. Loops are fingerprints that start on one side, go up and back down again like a little loop on the same side. So the ridge starts on the same side and ends on the same side. Whirls are fingerprints that kind of look like little circles or ovals. They have one circle in the middle and they keep going out and out and out. Now, on the world fingerprint, we have what we call deltas. Delta is like the Greek symbol, delta, like a little triangle. You can see on the world, we have a little triangle here where the ridges meet. And we have another one here. Deltas, two deltas are found on worlds. One on one side, one on the other. Now, loops also have a delta, if we go back to loops. They also have a delta. It's right here on either side. This side or this side. Loops are the most common fingerprint. About 70% of the population have loops. Sometimes people have double loops. You can have two loops in one fingerprint. Arches are least with only 5% of the population having them. So if you have an arch, hey, good job. And whirls, whirls happen about 25% of the population. So 25%, most common, 70%, the least common, 5%. So let's see, which fingerprint am I? Hmm, I kind of see a delta on two, I kind of see two deltas on either side, let's see. I don't know this one, magnifying glass. Maybe this one, let's see. I think I'm a whirl, wow. Yep, I would say I'm a whirl. I think I see two deltas, one on each side. So I fit in with 25% of the population. How cool. Now I would encourage you to try this at home. Which fingerprint type are you? Hmm. So you can submit your pictures of this activity or videos to map at cityofmontclair.org. That's map at cityofmontclair.org. Wait a minute. Don't we have a mystery to solve? <gasps> it's
go. All right, everybody needs to come in for fingerprinting and questioning. Let's go. Oh, uh, but I have to go pick up my kids. Let's go. Why, well, I man, I didn't even do anything. Sir? Let's go. There's a logical explanation. Uh -uh. Let's no, go. no, no, but no. Let's go. There's Let's a go. logical explanation. Let's go. Why do I have to do this? Let's go. Let's help our crime scene investigators solve this mystery. When the fingerprint results come in, here's what you need to do. First, examine the fingerprint from the trophy case. Next, take a careful look at all the other fingerprints. And finally, when you find the match, you have solved the case. As you're looking at the fingerprints, feel free to take notes. You can take pictures with your phone or you can pause the video. Now here are the results from the fingerprints. If you need more time to work on solving this case, here are a few helpful hints. Pause the video, rewind and look at all the fingerprints, and when you are ready, return here and resume the video. Have you figured out who did it? Are you sure? Okay, then let's find out. First of all, I'd like to say that uh, this wasn't a crime because I had uh, permission and I did have the authorization to uh, get that trophy out of the case. In fact, uh, Daryl called me personally to get that trophy uh, cleaned up and engraved for a special event. I think the real mystery that needed to be solved was whose voice was that on the phone? I don't ever recall Daryl greeting anybody on the phone saying, Howdy do, this is uh, Mr. Daryl. I don't think he even calls himself Mr. Daryl. Anyway, that uh, sounds like somebody just recorded their voice and when they press play, there's an option on a recorder to slow it down. So the voice sounds a lot uh, deeper. But how do you do this? Is Mr. Daryl? No, I've never ever heard him uh, use that type of greeting. And if Daryl wants something done, I know he trusts me. Like I've known him for a very long time. Yes, the crime scene investigator. I think she did a, a terrific job. That was her job to find out uh, whose fingerprints they were. Obviously, it's gonna be my fingerprints because I was 
I was there, I was uh, at the trophy case because obviously I had to get the trophy out. And I really tried to tell her, it looked like, okay, you're here at the trophy case. Uh, what's uh, going on here? I wanted to let her know that I have the trophy. I have it. I was supposed to because Daryl called me and said, hey, John, I want you to get the trophy. We have this very special event. We need the trophy. But I guess the most important lesson here is uh, communication. I think if we had uh, communicated uh, with each other, and yes, I, you know, should have asked everybody what was going on. But yes, it's uh, easier to, you know, sit back and uh, be a Monday morning uh, quarterback and say yes, we should have done something differently. But for sure, communication is the key. If we just uh, communicated with each other, I could have told them, hey, I have the trophy right here, but I don't need to call the, the crime scene investigator. But I am, you know, really curious right now, uh, who was the one who uh, called Daryl? I'm sorry, who was the one who called and said, how do you do this is Mr. Daryl? Now, I think that's the real mystery. You know, maybe we could uh, go solve that one. Okay, uh, I think I'm done here. Yeah, we're, we're good. You? Yes, I had the trophy all along. All you had to do was ask. But my job is done. Unless you want to find the person who did that Mr. Daryl imitation. Okay. Now it's time for some discussion and recap. What is a crime scene investigator and what does a crime scene investigator do? A crime scene investigator is someone who goes out to a crime scene and collects physical evidence. Physical evidence are things such as fingerprints, shoe markings or shoe impressions, and they can collect fiber, either hairs or fibers from fabrics. And they might even take photographs of the crime scene or talk to possible witnesses. What do you need to do to become a crime scene investigator? You become a crime scene investigator? Well, you need at least two years at a community college to get an associate's degree plus a crime scene investigation certificate. You need to be certified in crime scene investigation. And you can also take this at a community college or a four-year university. I do encourage you to pursue that and go to a four-year university, get a bachelor's degree, or even a master's degree in criminology, biology, physics, any kind of science. Do you remember the types of fingerprints mentioned in this video? Think about how this information might be useful to solving cases. So there are three different kinds of fingerprints. Now remember, we are looking at the ridges of your fingers. The ridges are the tiny bumps and grooves on your fingertips. Now when we examine a fingerprint, we're looking from this section of your finger, from not just the tip, but from the top to kind of like right here. So let's look at the three kinds of fingerprints. First, we have arches. Arches are fingerprints that start on one side, go up in a little hill, and come back down again. These are arches. Loops are fingerprints that start on one side, go up, and back down again like a little loop on the same side. So the ridge starts on the same side and ends on the same side. Whirls are fingerprints that kind of look like little circles or ovals. They have one circle in the middle and they keep going out and out and out. Now, on the whirl fingerprint, we have what we call deltas. Delta is like the Greek symbol delta, like a little triangle. You can see on the world we have a little triangle here where the ridges meet. And we have another one here. Deltas, two deltas are found on worlds. One on one side, one on the other. Now here is an open-ended question for you. Remember, there are no right or wrong answers to this question. Did this activity inspire you to pursue a career as a crime scene investigator? Why or why not? 
If this activity did inspire you, then we're glad it did. If not, we at least hope you found it useful. We hope you enjoyed this activity. Why don't you send your response to this question to map at cityofmontclair.org. Again, that is map at cityofmontclair.org. See you next time.